Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be talking about my top favorite knives for outside. So if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan outdoor content and knife-related content just like this. Okay, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first kind of disclaimer or really how these favorite knives kind of came to be or how they ended up on the list is really these are just the knives that when I'm outdoors, when I'm outside, these are some of my favorite knives that end up either in my pocket, on my body, or in my pack. And so really there's no particular rhyme or reason to a lot of these knives. They're just, they end up being some of my favorite blades. Some are expensive, some are cheap, some are made out of really nice materials, some aren't. But at the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to the fact that most of these knives that you see here, or really all of these knives that you see here, have spent a lot of field time with me and continue to spend a lot of t field time with me. And so that's how they've ended up as my favorite knives. And if you have been around the channel, you, this list probably won't quite surprise you because there are a lot of reoccurring guests, so to speak, uh, when it comes to these knives. So a lot of them are great. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the top four blades. Now these are all quite expensive knives and they are made out of some pretty solid materials, but undoubtedly these are the knives that spend the most time with me outdoors, aside from maybe my uh, pocket knives that we'll talk about in just a second. So these are the four primary blades. So the first one, one that you've probably seen around the channel quite a bit, and a lot of people think I forget this knife. I really don't. It just lives primarily in my truck. But this blade right here is the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And I have used this blade a lot for survival training and practice and even bushcrafting to an extent. And this blade just fits my hands and my needs very well. And so I really don't have enough good things to say about the CRK Pacific. They are maybe not quite the blade that you would think for out outdoors initially, but they are really solid, really useful blades for the wilderness. And so like I said, the CRK Pacific is just a fantastic knife. I really do love it. I have put a lot of use and abuse on this blade and it just keeps on running. In addition, I also have lightly modified it or maybe more than lightly modified it in just a few areas to make the blade slightly more functional for me. So this is the knife that I choose to use quite a bit for survival. And uh, like I've mentioned in the past, this is my truck survival knife. So I do occasionally break it out for trail and for wilderness purposes and practice, but for the most part, it primarily just lives in this setup uh, in my vehicle. So one that has been around the channel for a while is the BRK Bushcrafter. Now this is the original Bushcrafter, not the 2.0 or the lightweight. Uh, and this blade does come in many different flavors, but I prefer the CPM 3V. And this blade for me, especially for bushcrafting and wilderness living, really just checks all the boxes. It's not the most slicey blade, but it's also not super delicate. And uh, you can really build crafts with it, process game animals, process uh, natural resources, uh, baton, and do really anything you need in the wilderness with a BRK or Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. So this is a really hard blade for me to beat and top, but it is starting to see some competition in the next few knives we will be discussing. So a really awesome knife, and this one mixed with the CRK Pacific really make up the bulk of my favorite bushcrafting knives, or at least knives that I end up using a lot in the wilderness. The 3D K M A K and this blade is very similar in a lot of ways to the BRK Bushcrafter, though slightly different. And uh, you know, it just is its own little blade. And I really do love this guy. It is fantastic and quite quickly proving to be a very capable, very useful camp and field blade. It is just a bit larger than the uh, BRK Bushcrafter, but it is the same thickness or 5:30 seconds, and it has a lot of the same attributes as the BRK Bushcrafter and so it is a fantastic blade a little bit more robust and a little I would say less fine but certainly not in a very uh, noticeable manner this is still a very capable blade for uh, processing animals and resources and also doing general camp tasks this one is in K110 so a pretty comparable steel to CPM 3V 
This is just a little bit more of a kind of modern blade or modern take on the whole kind of wilderness blade. Okay, so next in the lineup and probably the one that I'm most excited about is the JBK or JB Knife Works Layman. Now this one is actually a little bit smaller than the BRK Bushcrafter and is really just a different approach to a wilderness blade as opposed to being a kind of similar competitor to the BRK Bushcrafter. Now the reason I keep referring to the BRK is just because it's what I use the most and it's what I'm most familiar with. But this blade definitely offers a different approach and it times a little bit better approach. Now, if you know the channel, you'll know that I'm definitely a fan of running an ax, hatchet, and saw in a lot of my setups. So having a super robust fixed blade while it is nice, isn't necessary 100% of the time. So that's where blades like this layman that is a little bit finer toothed, a little bit more fragile at the tip is actually a venerable contender. This thing being that it is slightly smaller and a little bit finer in its own overall grind and uh, blade means that it is a really good blade for processing especially natural resources and game animals but also doing things like carving notching and cutting you're going to have less resistance and it's going to be a easier time overall now this one's also made in an even better steel than cpm 3v this one is 8670 and i have nothing but good things to say on this blade it is really awesome very comfortable and uh I love the little custom touches that this blade has, such as the, uh, such as a tapered spine, as you guys can see. But at the same time, it also is 530 seconds, so it is stock thickness, the same thickness as the other two kind of go-to bushcrafting blades. So this is more robust than just a true carving knife. You can baton with it. You can hard use this blade a bit. Obviously the tip is going to be a little bit thinner than the other two options. So I definitely keep that in mind and respectively run this with tools that can kind of bridge the gap and do a lot of the harder work. So that is the JBK Lehman and uh, I really do love this blade. You're gonna see a lot more of it on the channel. It's also super comfy uh, to hold and to use. So this guy is definitely one of my favorites and it definitely has a lot of fizz factor, if you will, in the way that when you pull it out of the sheath, when you look at it, it's just a nice looking blade and its performance matches its looks. Okay, so moving over to a few more blades that are certainly favorites and not forgotten at all on the channel are these guys. So we'll start off with the pocket knives. Now when I mean pocket knives, these don't quite fit in any normal traditional pocket, but I do wear Fjell Raven Vita Pro vented pants quite a bit. And on those pants, they have a special kind of pocket that is designed to facilitate the use of putting fixed blade sheaths in and so you can withdraw the uh, knife and there's a little uh, clasp that keeps the sheath kind of held in place. So my three primary pocket knives in that regard are the Mora Bushcraft Black, the Condor Pterosaur, and the Mora Kunzbull. And all three of these blades perform very similarly and serve the job very well, but depending on what exact purpose I need, will dictate the exact one I go for. Now the Bushcraft Black is pretty good. It is, is a pretty great knife. I do like this one quite a, bit, quite a bit for general purpose camp tasks. And once again, if I'm wanting to offset any of the other neck knives, including this one, the Bushcraft Black tends to do a pretty good job at that. Um, it is a little bit lighter than the Pterosaur, but also still has a great C100 uh, blade steel. So pretty similar to the Pterosaur, the Bushcraft Black, but the Condor Pterosaur is the next one up on the list. And this one is very fantastic. I don't know how exactly Condor made this blade the way they did, but with the thickness and with the grind that they put on this, which is just a normal Scandi grind, um, 
this blade feather sticks and does a lot of general purpose bush crafting such as notching carving and uh, batoning extremely well it is full tang so it is a little bit more robust than the bushcraft black but this thing does just generalized generalized camp tasks fantastically and I will usually run this one probably the most of all three uh, in conjunction with one of my neck knives to make this blade absolutely or to make myself a little bit more well-rounded and this blade does a great job at like I said camp life in general and I really do love it having it as an offset blade for my neck knives. So the last one is the Mora Kunzbu, and this one I will primarily pick if I do want a stainless option. Now, most of the blades you see here are either tool steels, so they're you know semi-stainless, or they are just carbon steels, so they're not stainless at all. So it is nice to have a stainless option in case I am working in rainy climates or conditions, and the ability to have less corrosion or a greater corrosion resistance in a blade is um, desirable. So I primarily keep this one for that regard and keep this one in the short list for that regard, but it also does have this nice secondary grind that allows you to process things uh, easier because there's a lot less blade stock up towards the tip and belly of this knife. So it is nice for that option. In addition, this is a very light blade. It's actually lighter than the other two uh, options as a whole. So it is very nice to have as a secondary because it doesn't take up or doesn't add that much weight for the type of capability that it can add to my list of, of tools. The last one in this next show is the Legome. And this is the LT Wright Legome. And this one doesn't see as much action as some of the other primary bush crafting blades that we just mentioned. But the Legome is a very fantastic knife. And as I've said in other videos, this uh, blade was partly made with Morse Kohansky. And there's just a lot of bush crafters that lended their hand and skill and time and knowledge into making this blade and it really does show uh, not so much in its very simple and kind of humble looks but when you use it in field it is a very capable very useful blade and it is overall a hard blade to beat as far as comfort and usability goes uh, really when talking about any of the knives we've discussed so far a lot of it comes down to splitting hairs and it's more just what gives you more excitement to use because any of these knives that i did mention are all going to serve the job very well not so much heritage but because of all the uh, experience that went into making this knife and designing it so overall it's a really great blade and in o1 tool steel there's really no complaints Okay, now we finally made it down to the last two of my favorite knives to use outside. So we'll talk about the small one and then go to the large. So this small one is the Victorinox Ranger. And this one I have come to really love and use quite frequently in the past few months now. And it definitely secures a spot on the list because for something that you can throw in your pocket so easily and carry without much of a consideration, it packs a lot of useful tools into it and overall this blade is really fantastic or really multi-tool and it has just about everything you would realistically need and want in a reasonably good sized package now it's certainly no replacement for larger stronger better fixed blades but for something to throw and run in tandem with some of the knives that we previously mentioned this is a really good option for that so the victorinox ranger has to obviously make it onto the list because it's used carried and loved <laughs> Okay, so the last one is the, the largest on the list, and that is the Ontario Artac 2. Now, this one admittedly does not go everywhere with me, just because its sheer size makes it a little bit unwieldy for me to always pack around. And if you haven't noticed already, my 
my normal trend for blades is normally knives that are about this large so in comparison the little jbk layman is about that big in comparison to the rtac 2 it is absolutely dwarfed but that's essentially the pro and the con to it it is a very nice very large blade the rtac but uh, overall it's usually just a little bit too big for a lot of operations but when i want to go and specifically use a large chopping blade or a blade to baton this is definitely one that I go with and as you can see it certainly has seen some use and uh, it does continue to see use and it is a really awesome big blade that I've also modified and done a handful of things too to kind of make it my own and make it just a more effective knife out in the woods so this has to make it onto the list because it is a large blade it is an awesome blade that is very uh, fantastic and fun to use in the field it does give me quite a bit of fizz the fizz factor is certainly high on this one so i do enjoy it quite a bit now a few honorable mentions would definitely have to be the cold steel srk and the buck thug the only reason i didn't bring them out and talk about them is because i have knives that are very similar in performance that i like just a little bit more things like the crk pacific i like a bit more than the srk and it just can't quite compete but it's not also designed to compete with a blade of this caliber so that's kind of the reason why it didn't make the cut and the buck thug is certainly awesome but i think that the rtac 2 is just a bit better for most people and i get a little bit more fun out of using the rtac 2 than i do the buck thug anyways these are the blades that these are my favorite blades to use when i am outside hopefully enjoyed the video and as always guys god bless and i'm out